estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não resisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não Let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause Dear brethren, we're gathered here today, including those at home, to have a special meeting with our Lord, which is not a mystical meeting, but rather a very beautiful, very pleasant meeting with His Holy Word. Whenever we're reading or listening or meditating, we feel we are being enlightened, and that's Christ showing us His face, His image, what Christ can do for us all. And if we take hold of this revelation, we shall have a wonderful meeting. All the prophecies we find here in the Bible were not put there just randomly, but such prophecies were inspired by our Lord with one single purpose. For instance, perhaps you may have asked yourself at least once something I'm about to tell you. What actually happened when Jesus transfigured on the mount? Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and he left the other disciples down the mountain and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And up there on the mount, Jesus was transfigured before the apostles. God's glory came down. It was just beautiful. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white, as the Bible says, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. A witness never seen here. It is speaking about the purity of such moment whenever we feel God's glory upon us. You may be the worst sinner. You may do everything wrong. But once you understand the Word of God, if you cry out to Him, God can make you cleaner than anyone else who's been coming to church their whole lives or who's even been here preaching behind the pulpit. Remember, there are no limits for God to do, to do His work in any person who actually believes in His Holy Word. And then two other people appeared to them and talked to Jesus. They were Moses and Elijah. And what is the meaning of all of that? We usually say that Moses represents the law. And that is correct to a certain extent. Eliza represents the prophets. That's true, as he was one of God's greatest prophets. And the Lord Jesus, who was there with them, is a symbol of the new covenant, right? But there are many more explanations God can make us understand. Moses is a symbol of those who died for Christ because he died in the hands of the Lord. The devil tried and searched the place millimeter by millimeter in the Mount the mount where he died, Mount Nebo, and he couldn't find his body and he disputed about Moses' body with Michael the archangel. And Mike, Michael the archangel said, the Lord will rebuke you. This is God's business. You have nothing to do with this. You shouldn't try to explain mysteries you cannot understand. And above all, you shouldn't speak with the devil. The devil was made greater than men because he used to be an angel. But we are his short and he was this big. I'm not sure how much bigger he was, but he is very false and deceptive, the devil is so misleading that if you listen to what he says, he will most certainly corrupt you. And there are many people being corrupted for they believed what he asked for. Listen, if you do this and that for me, right? I'm going to make you wealthy, wealthy, I'm going to make you great. Not only does he lie, but the people are corrupted by what he says. Eve was deceived when the cunning serpent appeared in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, telling her that they were very lucky for they had everything. Well, sort of, we don't exactly have everything. You know, we, we're not allowed to eat the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of, of the garden. And why not? Because God said we will die. You will not die, for God knows that. In the day you eat it, you will be like God. And Eve was very curious and wanted to be like God. She was not just interested in being the mother of all mankind without any sorrows or sins in the Garden of Eden, which would lead to a completely different history, the history of mankind. Adulteries would never have happened, crimes would never have happened, accidents would never have happened. There would only be people living according to God's will. But Eve, she went towards a tree and she shouldn't have. If you feel that someone is way too interested in you, doing, don't go there to make a fuss about it, forget all about it. Because if you pay too much attention to them, you will be giving a chance to, to be deceived, you know, and then you may end up seeing things you should have never seen or think about things you should have never thought of and discover the things that God has been showing you. 
She walked and looked at the fruit and agreed with the serpent because the fruit was desirable. It was pleasant to the eyes and her body felt tempted. God is forgetting it, you know. It looked so pleasant and desirable. The fruit, it was, um, it looked delicious. It was pleasant to the eyes. Wow. Look at that. I just can't understand why God has forbidden us to eat it. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. She was tempted in three aspects, her body, her soul, and her spirit. That's how the devil does it. And then you become contaminated. You become corrupted for life. Now, those who die, I'm referring to Moses now, those who die in the grace of Christ, their mortal bodies will be resurrected. So Moses was there speaking to the Lord Jesus, for he had died and so on. And where did Moses die? Moses died in Mount Nebo, as described in the Holy Bible. According to the word, Moses died there and God buried him. But no one knows where. And Moses came and spoke to Jesus that day. The other man, there was Elijah, who never died. Elijah did not die. He ascended to heaven, but he did not die. He was raptured. So he is a symbol of those who were alive when Jesus returns. But they shall ascend to heaven in the blink of an eye, shall we? Let's now read what Peter wrote here in 2 Peter 1, verse 16 on. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you power in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the one who pleases me, the one who ple gives me pleasure... And when he heard this voice which came from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines. That means Elijah represented all the prophets. In a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture, no prophecy at all, is of any private interpretation. Now, I was looking at something here, and this is something, and this is something else. No, no, if God didn't say it, they don't interrupt, interpret it. Wait for things to clear up. Just mention the prophecy, because when the person hears the prophecy, they may un even understand something, and you may make them confused with your private interpretation, because no prophecy is of any private interpretation. And those who dared to do so caused great harm to themselves and those who followed them. Shall we continue? For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Because God wanted to give them that prophecy. And many people failed to understand that they are prophesizing. And this often happens to many of us here, and we don't understand what's written. You may think something with your mind, but the revelation comes directly by the Holy Spirit. And many times... Uh, many times of trouble, you suddenly notice, oh my Lord, it was right in front of my nose and I hadn't realized it. Therefore, let's always focus on the Word of God. I shared with you two revelations that might be helpful, which explains why Moses was there and why Elijah was there. Moses represented the law, Elijah represented the prophets, and the Lord Jesus represented the Holy Gospel. There's nothing wrong with this, but you might have a different understanding according to what you need at the moment. And the second one is that Moses represented those who died in the grace of God because he died in God, and those will arise, the ones who died in Christ, and the living ones were represented by Elijah who ascended to heaven and came back to, to speak to them, and he never even died. And perhaps we might even say, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure this is 100% accurate, but we may say that Elijah was the first man who was transformed. I'm not sure, because when he came back to speak, to Jesus, and when the apostles noticed it, they saw it was Elijah who was there. So I'm not going to discuss this hypothesis. I'm going to talk to you about all the prophecies. Let God guide you in your life, because then you will understand everything as it might be needed. Amen? Kelly Benigno, please come here. Amen, Kelly! Amen, Dr. Suarez. Are you ready? Let's applaud Jesus, folks! Glory to God! O meu Deus é forte e irá me ajudar Com Ele sou mais eu Eu sou de Deus O que o homem pode me fazer 
Comigo não vou temer Ao lado do meu Senhor Não sinto mais solidão Eu me lanço nos braços eternos Aos cuidados de um Pai de amor Abraça-me, Senhor Abraça-me, Senhor Abraça-me, Senhor Se eu passar pelas águas Elas não me submergirão E se eu passar pelo deserto Ali eu não morrerei Com Deus ao meu lado Rios e mares Atravessa Abraça-me, Senhor Se eu passar pelas águas Elas não me submergirão E se eu passar pelo deserto ali Eu não morrerei Com Deus ao meu lado Rios e mares Atravessa God. Thank you, my brothers. Shall we now travel to Londrina in the state of Paraná to watch this part of a meeting we held there and that was divided into several parts. Let's watch it now in the name of God. Blessings after blessings. This is what we see in our church in Londrina and Paraná. And that is because all people hear the voice of God through His mighty word. Learn how to speak to God. Learn what are God's plans for your life. And once you understand it, stand fast. Putting the knowledge gained into practice, we notice that we can take possession of our blessings through the name of the Lord Jesus. I've had this back pain for over 30 years now. I was 16 years old when it first appeared. And since then, I've never had any peace. I changed my mattress about 15 times. 
because I couldn't find a position to sleep. Did you feel too much pain? Oh yes, too much. Night and day. Night and day. How do you feel now? It's gone. It disappeared. Wow, praise the Lord. Applause to Jesus. I felt this pain from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. So everything hurt? Yes, everything. My bones, and my body. And how do you feel now? Look at me now. I feel great. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Look at that, folks. Thank you, Jesus. It's been seven years with this pain in my knees, my feet, and all the swelling. And how was it for you to walk? Well, I would walk with a limp. Show us how you walked. Is the pain gone now? Yes, it did. I could stand for half an hour and I didn't feel any pain anymore. So go ahead and walk normally now. Praise God. I had a stroke a little more than one year ago, and I felt my legs numb, but today I feel... Do you feel fine now? Yes, I do. Do you have a limp when you walk too? Well, this is how I used to walk. This like way. Like this. So go ahead and walk normally now in the name of the Lord Jesus. How beautiful is that? 20 days ago, I had a breast surgery. I went through a biopsy. Then it started to hurt two days ago. I felt it swollen and I felt a lump. And how do you feel now? I couldn't even clap my hands while we sang already. You feel fine now? I couldn't do it before, but after you prayed... So you can clap your hands now. Go ahead uh -huh. in the name of Jesus. I had a problem in my sciatic nerve and in my spine, you know. So I went to this therapist and he gave me... Well, he said I had some kind of curvature problem in my spine, so I felt this crack when you were praying, and I felt this healing. Tell me something you couldn't do before. Well, I couldn't even stand here in front of you as I'm doing right now, with my spine what straight. What was your posture center, like? Straight. My spine looked curved, you see? I had, I had to wear this kind of posture correction So you strap. can show us how you used to walk before, where you had to wear that strap. I had to walk Show like us. this, look. I couldn't even ride my motorcycle. And you, did you remove the strap? Yes, I did. Did you remove it at home or here? I removed it and put it in my bag. Look, this is the strap I used to wear. That's right. You wore it for better pass posture. And without it, you couldn't walk in walk any position. Like oh, did you reduce the Yes, the you pain? can throw it away Don't now. throw it away. I'm going to take you as a trophy. All right. We never throw things away here. The only thing we get rid of is demons. We command them to Amen. go to hell. He's completely healed, brethren. And now, take a look at the sister when she arrived at the temple. She tells us why she came. I came to be healed from my knees so I can walk normally. And for God to heal me, I know I must have faith, right? If you seek for your blessing in the name of Jesus and with a heart full of faith, you will get there. Arthritis and arthrosis. For how long? Almost a year, and the doctor said I had cartilage problems. I wouldn't come today because I couldn't drive. How did you walk? around with, with that condition, with that condition. I had a limp like and I had to drag my leg. But things have changed now. Jesus has healed you. Go and walk normally now. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus. No more pain? No. Were you healed? In the name of Jesus. A life with Jesus is a life full of joy. We are grateful, my Lord, for the blessings you gave us to live and see miracles such as these. My dear brethren, let's give Jesus a round of applause. What a wonderful testimony that first lady gave, eh? She spent so many years in pain and the pain immediately went away. She changed mattresses about 15 times and nothing changed. My dear brethren, God can end whatever has been hurting you today. You just need to believe him. There's no secret. Or you should start seeking recovery. There are situations when people are so far away from the Lord that they need to come closer and closer so they can start to change and change. Imagine that you are a farmer and you're given a plot of land, but this land is practically useless. Nothing you sow there will grow. If it ever grows, it will grow with problems and it never gives any fruit. So what do you need to do? You have to treat that land. You have to sow it. You have to, to fertilize it. You have to check whether they are being used in the right way. And if the weather is good at the right time, you shall harvest many fruits. Now the time of God will always help you. God will send the rain at the right time and perfect amount. But we must treat the land before. We need to see what are the hurdles that prevents us from being blessed by God. About three or four services ago during this week, last week actually, I was talking about Deuteronomy 8, but I had to stop it because other revelations came to me. But I'm going to go back to this discussion in order to prepare your heart. Shall we read it? I specifically separated two verses. Verse 1. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. So every commandment, everything you feel, God is commanding you. And that has drawn your attention. That is a commandment. Perhaps you think of yourself as a consecrated person. But once you hear your God's word and everything changes, and sometimes people think they are not holy and feel they don't have strength to change. About 20 years ago, I received a letter from this man. And that letter must have been written with his tears, not because it was wet but because of what he wrote. He said, Dr. Suarez, I am now prepared to go to heaven. I'm 82 years old. 
And for more than 40 years, I used to be the main deacon at the church. I used to go to, when the pastor went on his vacation, I would replace him. He would let me officiate all marriages. Everybody would give me a hug. I saw girls and boys be born, grow old, become parents, and I saw their children getting married. And sometimes I was the one who officiated the marriage of their father and their son. But I was living a sinful life. I was an adulterer, and no one knew about it. No one could ever imagine that that nice, happy, smiley old man who would give nice advice was living a dirty, sinful life. But then I started watching your program four years ago, and I started to change. The land started to be cultivated. And finally, one day, you gave such a preaching that I felt it was directed at me. That's when I made a decision. Dr. Suarez, from the day I made that decision up to now, I stood fast for once. I know that if I didn't start watching your program about four years ago and I died, I would go straight to hell. But things have changed now. I made amendments with everyone. I live in the grace of God and I'm living by God's commandments. That's impressive, brethren. Many people may be in the same condition, not in adultery only, but perhaps other sins. They know some things are seen as dishonest, but they pretend nothing is wrong. You know, after all, you know, no, no, dear brother. Yes is yes and no is no. Whether it's different from that comes from the devil. Don't be corrupted under any circumstances. Let's read what it says. Every commandment. So if you felt it, then it's for you, right? You must be careful to observe. And then it goes on. What for? That you may live. There are people who won't live according to the Holy Gospel and multiply. There are people who refuse to multiply. They have never brought Jesus a new soul. And that's a shame. If they go into heaven, if they go without anybody with them, no, no. They must bring a soul to Jesus and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers, the land of promises, of salvation. That was a word given by God as if it were an oath. God gave his word about it and he would give us that land. But we must go into that land and take possession of it. And God will never deny what he promised us to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the prophets, to the Holy Scriptures, to all of us. And he continues, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. And meaning to test you, to put you to t -t test, right? To know that what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. The same thing happens today. God gives us a certain blessing and we immediately face some kind of temptation. No, I am of the child of Jesus. I made my decision. I decided to have Jesus in my life and I'm not going to look back. No, no, I'm not going to stand like Lot's wife and become a pillar of salt inside the church. No way, no. I'm going to be a living stone. I'm going to be the kind of person who observes God's commandments, who pleases and indulges God, who live God's blessings. There are people who won't take God seriously. And if they die in this situation, nothing can be done. Shall we read verse 3 now then? This is new material for us. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord will allow us to feel hungry or to be humbled, and he may even say he was responsible for humbling us because he could have protected us. But otherwise, we would never open our hearts to the Lord God. We are all seeking Jesus' commandments. We are being filled with great blessings. But then after we follow a certain path to do a certain work and nothing else, we start thinking we will not have problems anymore. Other people will. They must fast. They must seek God and pray and beg. They have to hear his word, but not us. We just open the Bible and we read God's words. And that's when we start going astray. Revelations won't come to us anymore. And people will start looking after new things than buy a house in the countryside where they have to become wealthy. And every weekend they go to the country house instead of going to church or a beach house. Or perhaps they buy a, a place at the beach or, or a car and they will visit their families. But don't you have to go to church? I can go there any other time, but they never come to church again. And flesh is taking over their heart. So God creates a crisis in their lives so that people feel desperate. My goodness, I don't have food to eat. I won't be able to pay for my bills. What now? God, please open a door for me. But God is showing us all, my brethren, that manna is good enough for us. But many times, just like the children of Israel, we get tired of eating manna. Come on. We want to eat some meat with spices from Egypt, with, with garlic, with onions, and everything you can think of with a wonderful touch of pepper. 
I want to have some melon and so on and so on. And, and this manna, it's so boring. My goodness, he is feeding you with bread of the heavens. That manna was extremely needed for they were crossing the desert and they walked for 40 years and not one of them ever became sick. Because of that manna, which provided all they needed, their shoes sometimes became tight. I'm sure if God would make them larger or give them new pairs, but their feet wouldn't get swollen. God showed them that. Their clothes never worn out. God protected them all. They only had problems when they sinned. They didn't even feel the need to drink water. They had to walk night and day. Can you imagine that? They were being guided by God. But then they should never be ordinary men again. And that's why they had to face serpents. They had to face the devouring fire. They were tempted by his sins. Many things started to happen, right? And so on. Ministries were divided. Come on, brethren, stand fast on what God has given you so that God can give you many blessings. Let's read the next verse then. Your garments did not wear out on you. They wore the same garments for 40 years and they did not wear out. Nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Look how wonderful God is and why this won't happen to us then. Let's read what was written a bit before. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, or did the fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen? Shall we say a prayer now? Father, thank you so much for these words. We understood it, and we feel today is a day for us to start all over again for the person to whom you spoke right from the beginning, and they are praying to you now. That person who has never decided to observe your commandments, who has changed their minds, you are responsible for the choices you make or for refusing them. Make up your mind and observe Jesus' commandments. He will take good care of you. Now, Father, I bless these people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at me. Now, how many of you have come here today to receive my prayer, Dr. Suarez? I left home completely determined. I'm going to church now. So, Dr. Suarez, pray so I can be healed from this pain I've been feeling for years. My consequences, the anxiety, that common affecting my spirit, that commotion that was there, the days I feel like I feel so bad that I think I'm going mad. And perhaps you are. I'm going to say a prayer for God to set you free today, to bring you peace and to heal you. Have you come here for this? I can pray for you, brethren. So stand up and I'm going to pray for you right now. Now listen, when I finish praying, don't sit down right away. Remain standing until I tell you, for this manna not only makes your stomach full, it also strengthens your spirit, for this is a bread made in heaven so you can take possession and finally get rid of this temptation that is almost dominating you completely and which is about to do it completely. You must leave, you must get rid of this, this evil temptation before it's too late. Put your head down and close your eyes now. God spoke to you today, and you're going to pray now as a true adult, like a great warrior, a great fighter, like someone who is seeking their victory. Repeat after me, my dear Lord. I take possession of my blessing. I confess that I have not been acting like the child you want me to be, but today I heard your very words. I am saying no to all kinds of sin in my life, all diseases, all evil works. I declare myself free in the name of Jesus. Now, please be silent for I'm going to pray for you. Oh, my dear Lord, not only here at this church, but all over the world, there's a multitude of people praying with me now and saying, please forgive me, save me, heal me, set me free, make me wealthy. And I'm going to bless all these people now, my Lord. Because you say in your holy scripture that the Lord Jesus has already borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and that by his stripes we are healed. So dear Father, I now command in the name of the Lord Jesus that all spirits causing diseases, infirmities, poverty, temptation, any kind of evil are now bound from the lives of all of these people and I command them to leave and disappear and never come back. I'm speaking in the name of Jesus Christ and I might command them to leave now and never come back to hurt these people. God is working on you right now from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. The demon who is affecting your souls, let these people go now 
go away and take away your misery, your despair, your melancholy, and never come back here again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke all of your temptations. And you demons affecting the bodies of these people or their minds too, take with you all the pain, all the consequences from any accidents, memories of sins who make people feel absolutely mad because these people are being set free at this moment. Leave now and take with you all the pain in their joints, in their spine, in their back. Go and take with you all the cancer, all diabetes, high cholesterol levels, and syphilis. Take away the leukemia with A, B, C, hepatitis types, or any other type of illness. I'm giving you an order. Spirits causing diseases, obey me at this very moment. Disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. O Spirit of God, keep touching the lives of these people because all these people are being healed right now for the glory of your Lord. My Lord, as a minister of your holy word, I now declare that whoever came here suffering from any diseases and prayed and believed it is finally free in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. Look at me now. Dr. Suarez, I feel my soul is finally free now. I feel happy. I was, I was, I was feeling down, you know. I'm not going to ask this here because I think this is a private matter, okay? Now, but it's gone. I feel free now. Who among you, instead of feeling sadness or anxiety or depression, now feels happy? Who's feeling their souls are now free? Perhaps raise your hand if you feel this way. Please raise your hand. Lots of people. Those who raise your hands and feel like your soul is free may sit down. If you had a body issue, please stand up for a while longer for God is still working on you. I feel my soul is now free. Dr. Swadis, praise the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Look at me now, please. How many of you feel healed from your pain? I mean physical pain. It can be in your arms, in your hands, in your back, or in your feet, or pain in, in the leg, in your spine, or any other place, a headache. Who feels the pain is gone? Raise your hands like this in the name of Jesus. Lots of people too. Tell me here now. Very quickly, the microphone will soon be here. What was wrong, sister? My leg hurt so bad, I couldn't even stand to turn my leg like this. For how long? I left the subway. It's been about three days Three days. Now. When I left the subway a while ago, I almost... I almost fell down, but Amen. now the pain is gone now. God. Who else? What about you, my friend? My back hurt. Do you feel better now? I do. Amen. What about you up there in the balcony? My back hurt. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And you here in the front. Right here, look. Your arm hurt, That's right? right. When I was coming here, I felt this pain. Do you feel better now? I do. Amen. Thank God. I want a testimony about pain in the feet. These days, God has been healing lots of problems in the feet. And there was this meeting here. If I didn't force people to talk about half a dozen people would go home suffering from the pain again because if you're blessed by God, but don't tell about it, the devil steals the blessing from you. What happened to you, sister? Well, my ear, it felt as if it were full of water. When you turn your head, it sounds like brrrr. I was... How long have you had that? It's been a month I've been but feeling like this. But is it like gone this. now? Yes, it's Praise gone. Praise the Lord. Now you, here in the front, what happened? My spine. Two days or three, perhaps, my spine simply locked. But do you feel now healed I now? Feel, I Amen. feel Amen. Praise the Lord. You here, up front, sister. My leg, it hurt so bad, I couldn't stand it. But now I feel good. How long I, I have you good. had this problem? Oh, I've had this problem for quite a while now. It's been almost How did almost you walk so much pain? Well, I used to walk like this, but the pain was when I stood but up. But did you have a limp or something? No, I didn't walk but with now, a limp. Do you no. feel healed now? Now I can walk and dance perfectly the way I want it. Praise God. Now tell me, what happened to you? Well, I, it's been three weeks that I suffer from tendinitis and bursitis. Mm -hmm. And I watched your service the day before yesterday and I felt better already. And now I feel fine. Praise the Lord. There, that lady over there, what happened? My chest hurt. Do you feel better now? I do. Thanks Thank to you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And you, what happened? My back hurt. Is the pain gone? Yes, it's gone. Amen. What about the feet? No one said they were healed from a problem in their feet today. Is it possible the angel that heals people's feet didn't show up today? <laughs> yes, it could be the arches of your foot. It can be in the bottom of the foot. It could be on the heel. It's all feet. Foot means it, it goes from the heel to the tip of the toe. It starts here at the ankle. Speak up, sister. What was wrong? Well, my leg hurt, Dr. Suarez. I underwent this surgery to treat my varicose veins, and it was really painful. Is the pain over? It's gone. Up there in the balcony. It's been two weeks after I've had this pain in my foot, but I feel Great. healed now. But there are more people with problems in their feet. What happened to you? My leg, doctor. Is it better? Yes, Amen. I feel healed. It's been two weeks but now that my leg now. hurt. Amen. It's over. You there, what happened? 
My knee was burning, but now it's just fine. Amen. You in the back now. Pain in my heel, in my foot. See? God is operating. And there are more people, I'm sure. I don't want you to lose your blessing. And you, sister, what happened? Well, I felt a terrible pain, and my back hurt also. But now, thank God, I feel fine. Thank oh, God. Oh, go ahead and speak up, people. Freely. Don't hide anything from us. Come on. <laughs> if you don't tell us what God did for you, you're going to be put in the lampstand. So everyone to see it. What happened? I stood up for your sorrows, but when I sat down, you're talking about the food, and I started tapping my food. Because it's been six months that I've been suffering from plantar uh -huh. fasciitis. So I tapped my foot and I said, where is it? <laughs> in is the name of Jesus. That's it. Very important. God healed you. Plantar fasciitis. You see, we have this network of nerves in the sole of our feet. And they get swollen. And then things can get very serious. Jesus worked on her and healed her. Tell me what happened to you, brother. What was my wrong? My body ached, but the pain is over oh, now in the name the of Lord. Jesus. Now let's do this. I'm going to finish this prayer now. Okay, Father, I will not take away the blessing from all of these people. And next time we pray... We would like to hear testimonies from more people healed in your name. Amen. Amen, brethren. You may all sit down in the name of Jesus. Now, in the next weekend, I'll be in some missions in other countries. So then the pastor next weekend on the 14th and on the 15th. Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th, Pastor Jaime is preparing special meetings with you all. So you come with all that hunger. Be prepared to hear God. You will be listening to messages a bit different from mine because each one has their own point of view about the scriptures. But he is also an anointed man who can bless and heal you in the name of Jesus. Amen? Shall we now watch the real-life drama? In 1970, I started to, to drink, right? I started drinking alcohol and pot, but not too much. I believed that it wouldn't do any harm. He drank a lot, and all the time, you know, he was always bruised from falling on the street. His head was hurt all the time. The same thing with his feet. I would drink all day long. I arrived from, from, from work feeling fine, feeling normal, thinking no one would notice. Then I met my wife in 2006. I endured a lot. Teresinha gets to know the Grace of God Church on TV and makes a decision. I was happy there and I decided to stay there. I feel very good. She would invite me to go to the church and, and we did start going. People want peace, but they can't find it. So they drink more and more. I'd go to the church, you know, but I didn't have faith, so I couldn't quit drinking. I thought it was hopeless. So then we spoke to our pastor, you know, and she followed my routine for four years. Every time she would have a campaign, she would call me and say, I'm going to work on this campaign. Would you like to join me on his behalf? I said yes. She was quite persistent. She would never miss our sessions on Wednesday to stay with her family, you know. She always came to our special freedom campaigns on Fridays. In all of our campaigns, you know, she was always there, full of faith in her heart. Nothing's impossible for God. Joining her faith with our faith, attending meetings for special blessings, she finally received this miracle in the name of Jesus. I'd start reading the Bible, Matthew 6:33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And then I thought, and she said, when you drink, do it, but seek God. I thought, oh, Father, I know I won't be able to do it, but if you give me strength, maybe I can quit this addiction that is affecting not only me, but everyone around me. Adon joins the campaign with a lot of faith in his heart, and the first results begin to appear. I was scared because he went to the, to the fridge and he picked up. He picked up this bottle full of booze and threw the liquid on the sink. He then picked another bottle, a different one, which was full, and threw it in the sink. January 1st, 2012. That's when the old me died. But then time passed two months, three months, and then one year. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> the Bible says that those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And the message was delivered and changed the lives of those two. I couldn't believe it. I spent a whole year without drinking. And now, for the honor and glory of the Lord, he even avoids drinking soft drinks. This is something I can affirm. He won't drink anymore. He won't drink anymore, you see. He doesn't go to bars. Nowadays, we can say that he is 100% free from the addiction and it was a real struggle. He is now free thanks to our Lord Jesus. He always gives the tithe. He feels in his heart the need to become a sponsor. And if I could, I would help them more and more because this helps a lot of people that can afford it, you know. 
It's very important. I thank God for everything he did for his life, you know, his life and also in my life, you know. Today I can say Adele is a real blessing. He goes to church every Wednesday and every Friday and he goes there every Sunday. Next January 2nd, right? It will be the next year. It will be six years I completely quit drinking. I never drank again. He's a totally different man. He really changed for real. God was in charge of all this transformation. We have to acknowledge that God is really great and He performed a real miracle in our lives. Thank God I live in peace with the Lord. I feel blessed. Only God could save me from what happened to me. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Brethren, that's a great example of perseverance. And that lady will certainly be rewarded by God. She didn't just give a glass of water. She dedicated her life for a long time, seeking and praying, and she was able to save that soul to Jesus. One soul is much more valuable, and you can believe it because God doesn't lie, than all the gold in the world. Sister Eliana, what's this month's movie? This month's movie is a real blessing, and lots of people are seeking it. It's called I Forgive You. Mm -hmm. It says here, forgiveness can change everything when you give up your own justice, and that's the story of this movie. This movie will make everybody understand how important it is to forgive so you can be forgiven, right, Sister Leanna? Precisely. All right, then, God bless you. By the end of our meeting, go to the shopping mall next door and go see Sister Eliana. There you can find all the CDs from all the singers, from Bruna, also from that girl uh, Lillian Lopez. So you just go over there. It's right next door. You can find everything you need there. Those at home, you can place your order by our phone. It's really easy. Just call us. It's plus 27021911567. Again, 27021911567. On the internet, you just have to type in www.ongracesouthafrica.com or you can call us on WhatsApp and leave us a message. Call us and you can place an order. The number is 27079496903737. And let's now watch today's Open Your Heart in the Name of Our Lord Jesus. Dr. Suarez, I accepted the Lord Jesus 18 years ago, but I must confess I don't live a completely peaceful life. I suffered for a long time in the past. I was abused when I was a child, and this brought consequences for the rest of my life. I've already cried so much on my knees to the Lord, and I even came to the point of asking Him to take me to be with Him, because many times I just can't understand why I was even born. My soul cries in pain when I remember that day. I have forgiven the person that did that to me, but I feel this terrible pain in my soul. Many times I feel a lot of faith and hope, but sometimes it feels this faith is so far away from me, and things just fall apart all around me. Please help me, Dr. Suarez. I really need some guidance. You still didn't make the right decision and you may have forgiven him in your mind, but not in your heart nor yourself, who is not guilty of anything. Your game has two halves, let's say just like a soccer match. The devil won the first half when this horrible thing happened to you. And he keeps beating you in the second half because you won't forgive yourself and you keep reliving this. Dear sister, if it wasn't your fault, then you shouldn't even think about it anymore. Just say, it was not my fault. If you caused this, then ask God to forgive you, and then everything will finish immediately. And after that, you just think of it as something over dead and buried. Don't pick up a hook and go there at the Lagoon of Sins, pulling that thing out. No, no, this is over, and you shouldn't want anything to do with it anymore. Go live your life because you are confusing yourself, and God wants you to be alive. If it wasn't your fault, then you shouldn't even ask God for forgiveness because it wasn't your fault. But if you did, just ask Him forgiveness. On one way or another, you have to finish this whole story right now and start believing God, which is something you still haven't done because the Bible says that those who forgive other sins will be forgiven as well. And you still are too much attached to that sin. You're attached to it. And those who won't forgive shall not be forgiven. So make the right decision before our Lord God, and God will make you victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you are our sponsor, I really need you to go to the bank to make your deposit as soon as possible, brethren. The next days are the days we have our payments due, and it's a lot of bills over the for the whole world. It's receiving the world of word of God, and it's hard for us to pay for everything. But it's not time to give up. No way. We cannot stop until, be faithful till, until death, and I will give you the crown of life. If you don't have the bank, you see... Go, go to Ned Bank with the following numbers. 
our branch code at EdBank is 103910. Again, 103910. And our account number is 101191-9540. And if you still haven't become a sponsor, we are calling everyone who has heard the voice of God in their hearts. If you haven't heard it, then forget it. I'm not even speaking to you. If you heard his voice, you will know it. I heard God's voice. Dr. Swat is called, called me. I'm responsible for that. So fill out the form with your name and your address. Next to your name, write down the name of the person you want to bless. If it's for you, then you need, don't need to write anything. Then you tear it off. And I need from you is this part here so that I can say a special prayer for you at the last day of the month. And that one stays in your hand. For it is, it is for you to take it to Ned Bank Branch and make your deposit in the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Amen? Shall we now watch today's story of Grace TV? There were the soap operas, you know. My husband would watch soccer, a lot of soccer. It becomes a type of addiction, you know, because we could spend that time doing something necessary, the work of God, right? You may lose track of time because of soap opera distraction. Things are much better. Our house has changed. We were filled with blessings. Even my mother, who lives here with us, she has now learned more about the world because when she's sick, she accepts help. And even those who come to our house are blessed. My husband became a Christian through Grace TV. That was a great change because when God restored my marriage, he still had some addictions. He used to drink. So we had lots of problems here at home. And nowadays, wow, thank God, he's a blessing. Grace TV is only turned off here at home when it's time for us to go to church, you know? <laughs> Listen, Grace TV has the 11 crystal channels you need in your lives. I mentioned it many times before. Those who are here, now take this flyer with you. I'm not going to ask for your name or your phone number. If you don't hear God's voice asking you to describe it, just throw it away. But if you do, then you will see it's going to be a great blessing. On the back, you will find our phone numbers and you can give us a call. If you are at home now, just give us a call. It's 27 plus 021-911-5676. 2702191156767 Our website is ongracesouthafrica.com and you can call us on WhatsApp. It's plus 27079496903. Take the flyer with you and if you don't feel like it just throw it away. But if you want it just give us a call and we will answer immediately if you do subscribe your life will be completely transformed. I'm going to say a prayer for those who are at home now, Father. I'm saying this prayer for those watching us at their homes, for those who came here seeking some help, and also for those who didn't come even though they need some help too. For any reasons, maybe they just couldn't come, Father. I rebuke all the evil in their lives. I rebuke this pain hurting right here in the middle of one's ankle, Father. It hurts as if the bone is broken. You demon, take everything that belongs to you and go away. Take with you all kinds of illness and evil things and leave these people alone in the name of Jesus. 